I'm a rapper, I'm not a poet Poet, I'm not a rapper Guess it's opposite there Cause you niggas just got it backwards Got me sick to my stomach Go, go up on my lana New trio is free or the most Terrible tandem Deliver shock value But no, not Timber Lannon Critical observation alerting you ambulances Clap on and clap off Rap on and rap off Hard times for hard rhymes That concrete that asphalt If I did look twice I guess that's her asphalt May I assist you and score Get my pass out Matter of fact, it's what you need Please arrest you just fatigue See, technically I'm filing Mrs. Wiley, some Rasheed Know this beat is a banger Have no reason for anger If I'm slightly deterred You know I'm giving the finger Call my savage like Corey But not in need of Topanga Right like 90 degrees You in the need of an angle Need of an angle Welcome to the Free Lunch Podcast. This is your boy Tyler Tyler. I got BG with me. What's going on, BG? They know about us. They know about us. Free Lunch Podcast. What's happening there? Tight. What's good with you, bro? Man, I'm feeling wonderful. You going to take over the vine now, though? Nah, man. You know, I just got to get my piece in there. Hey, man. I got to get my piece in there. Hey, man. How was your, how was your, um, your day and your, and your past weekend? Nah, I'm trying to recover, man. I. I spent the weekend celebrating the Outcast 20 at last in Atlanta, Georgia. Bruh. How was it? Bruh. <laughs> Bruh. They still man, they still got it, man. They still got it. It was a spectacular show. They did three days. They did Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Had a different lineup each day. I hit the Sunday show. Mm-hmm. Killer Mike, Bun B, mm-hmm. 8 Ball, MJG. Oh, wow. uh, Big Crit, uh, DJ Unk, D4L, just to name a few, man. And then, the, you know, to wrap it up with with Outkast, you know, doing some of their hits. They, ain't, they didn't even do everything, but it was a great show. Diverse crowd. People really came out and supported. And, you know, just looking at the feedback, everybody really had a good time. So I'm still trying to recover. It's going to take me about a whole week to get over it. But it was well worth it. Not trying to, not trying to take the direction of the show this this way, but but you know, I was I was actually sitting here reflecting earlier today, and really reflecting over my summer, and just saying, okay, um, this summer I went to go see Jay Z and Beyonce on the Run tour, and then just uh, two weeks ago, Oprah was in D.C. Was had to had the opportunity to take my mom to the Oprah Life tour, so within a matter of a summer, you know, seeing two of the most influential people in the world, and then on top of that, this past weekend was able to attend the Congressional Black Caucus CBC event. So, man, we blessed. We are, we definitely are, and it's just it's our time to to be able to experience these things, learn, you know, learn the different stuff and uh, just get a chance to, to be around greatness. And by being a part of that and experiencing and taking that in, you know, it's going to give us something to, to build on and you know, encourage our friends and then our children, of course, the next generation to go further, further and take advantage of these things. Because a lot of the stuff that we're doing now, you know, our parents, didn't really consider for real or, or didn't, didn't do these type of things, especially not the way that we're doing it. So we truly are blessed. We are. Truly a blessing. We are. So sometimes you got to stop and smell the stop. roses, you know, and just really reflect and appreciate where you are in life and, and, and have this thing called gratitude because a lot of times we always looking for more. We're always looking, you know, for something new. But appreciate where you're at and appreciate – you know, what you've been able to, what you've accomplished up until this point. Um, because, I mean, if you just, just the thing, the, the, the four things you and I just named, man, that's amazing. It really is. And that's not even the, the direction that I wanted to take the show. But I kind of reflected over that over the weekend. I mean, actually, um, today and then just, you know, just from the text messages you and I shared with you being at Outcast and, um, you know, just reflecting over my mom coming here about two weeks ago and being able to take her to see see Oprah Winfrey, man, that was uh, that was a big deal to me. 
That's what it's all about. And that's a great thing that you did, man, taking your mom and allowing her to experience that and y'all spending that time together. That's why we're here to to take advantage of this stuff, be appreciative, be humble, um, and be inspired. Because I've really been inspired to see, you know, to see those guys, to see them, and then just to see the, the support. They were up there rocking with people that were there when they were in the dungeon. You know, they call themselves the Dungeon Family for a reason. It's the people that was there when they were laying down those roots. And to see them be able to get the support of the place where they come from, and people come out, spend money, and rock with them. I think it was eight hours. You get the gates open at 3 o'clock, and we don't leave until about 11. And people rocking nonstop. So, and then and then them doing it the way that they doing. Right. With, with Andre 3000 has on a, a, a jumpsuit and a white wig on. And he's had that <laughs> and some white, some white frame glasses. He has this on every show. And and it doesn't it doesn't strike anybody as odd because we've grown accustomed to him expressing himself the way that he expresses himself. Right. And we appreciate it. So it's just inspiring to see that you can be yourself, you can be creative, you can own your art, present your art to the world, do it the way that you want to do it, and people receive it and appreciate it when it's quality, when it's well put together. And one thing you can say about those guys is that throughout that 20 years that we've known about them, they seem to be real humble, man. To have all those accolades and still be able to accomplish those things that they've accomplished, it still seems humble. You don't never really hear them, you know, doing anything out of the way or, or, or anything that would offend anybody else. So it, it, it was just really inspiring to, to see that come together and, and put yourself in a situation where maybe I could do something like that on that level one day, you know? Articulate. The root of that is art. Articulate. The art is art, definitely the root. Is the soul's expression. So that's yeah. essentially the soul articulating God in action. That's uh, deep, bro. <laughs> you 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 philosophizing. <laughs> no, actually I just came up with that um we were I was I was actually walking yesterday. You know, I like to get out of, on Sundays and on the weekends and walk. Yeah. And I actually came up with that yesterday and I was like, Wow, that's pretty deep. Articulate. The root of that is art, and the soul expresses itself through art. So that's the soul is essentially articulating itself, and that's God in action. God in action. So anyway, uh, we got a, we got. I mean, that's that's good stuff, though. That's real good stuff. So um, you ready to jump into the, into today's topic? Well, we, we leaving some out, though, ain't we? Missing some? We missing some? Man, we missing some. You ready for it? Is you ready? I'm ready because I could easily, easily. I got two of them, and I'm a. After we, after we actually, after I do this one right here, the one that I'm gonna do, uh, and we kind of introduce the topic. I'm gonna tell you the one I I could have done. All right, but 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 for the sake of me just being selfish and wanting to do 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 one that um, do a song that used to be jumping back in the day, I said I'm gonna do this one anyway. Get it to him. Get it to him. Now, usually I don't do this, but uh, go ahead and break them off a little bit of the remix. Now, I ain't trying to be rude, ooh, but hey, pretty girl, I'm feeling you. Ooh, the way you do the things you do ooh, reminds me of my Honda Cool. While I'm all up in your grill, trying to get you to a hotel, you must be a football coach. The way you got me playing the field, so give me that two, two. That beat, beat, running her head through my fro, bouncing on 24 while they say on the radio. Do ignition, hopping fresh out the kitchen, mama rolling, that body got every man in here wishing, sipping on coke and rum. I'm like, so what? I'm drunk. It's the freaking weekend, baby. I'm about to have me some fun. Bounce, 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 bounce. <laughs> Dog, you did the talking part. And the ad <laughs> Now, what I'm interested to know is what you what you picked that one over. What did I pick it over? Yeah. Let's talk about sex, baby. <laughs> Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about all the good things and the bad things that. Mm -mm. Let's talk about sex. That's what I that's what I picked it over. So that right that just gave it away, didn't? It? Maybe maybe so maybe so. That one just gave it away, didn't it, what we about to talk about. 
We about to talk about sex, baby. We about to talk about sex, but from a different perspective, though, right? Let me just put oh, it out. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna put it. We out ain't gonna there. talk about. We ain't gonna talk about just sex and and how good it is and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we can. I mean, it's, it's it's all on how personal you want to make this. So that's yeah, the question. Just, how personal are you gonna get this? How you how personal are you gonna go with this conversation? Can I can I roll you up on the bus like you usually do? Uh, negative. <laughs> <laughs> can I make it known who I did it really was? Yeah, this is my idea. I'm a, I'm okay, own it. A, own it. Own it. Own it. Own <laughs> it. <laughs> I'm gonna own it now. We, I'm gonna own it now, but. So, I'm uh, with you, dog. I'm with you. I'm with you. Thick and thin. I'm with you. But I'm going to throw this out there, though. All right. And then I just want to, I want a, a simple a simple answer to the question. And then after that, we can go into some details as to why you chose the answer you chose. Indeed. And, like, and same thing for me. Indeed. So the question on the table. All right. Could you date someone that is a virgin or practicing celibacy? One word answer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, you can give me the long extended answer to that as we, can, as we. I'm going to just go ahead. I'm just going ahead. I'm just going ahead. Go ahead. I'm just going ahead and say no. I'm just going ahead and say no. Put myself out there on the chopping down block, but no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, sorry. Sorry. Uh, Sorry, auntie. Sorry, mom. Just got to be honest on this freelance podcast. We being honest, now. My bad. And that's the reason why I want to know how personal we gonna get this conversation, because I'm gonna go as I'm gonna go as personal as you take as you take it. So the so the question, same question to me. Same could, question to you. Could I date someone that is a virgin or practicing celibacy? And the answer is. Yes. Wow. Okay. And, 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 so, and that is a yes, but I really got to break it down as to why I said yes. Cause that was a very, that's a hard, that's a hard question to answer. It's a very hard question at this stage in the game, in terms of our age and, and all that. Yeah. That's a, that's a, that's a bold answer, bro. But, but, but not to go into too much detail off the top. The reason, well, do you want to know the reason why I said yes? Go for it. The reason I said yes is because it's almost it's almost answered the question. Uh, what, what what's the definition of of ignorance? Doing the same Not thing over and expecting different results. Exactly. So, in a lot of ways, you know, I I, I kind of said okay after after really thinking about this question. The reason I said yes is because it almost just be to change it up, right? Mm -hmm. Try to change up because if you've been doing something one way and you're still in the same boat, when I say the same boat, single or not married, if that's what you would like to do, then I think that maybe you should consider trying something different. Not saying that it's going to be easy and also thinking about some of the the consequences that can happen from that and what i say and when i say consequences i'm saying you know i think that people may rush into marriage or rush into 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 marriages because of because of the sex you know wanting to have sex with that person if they've been practicing celibacy or or if that person is a virgin so you know, I kind of want to discuss all those things in, in the next 30, 35 minutes or so. What you think? Okay. And I'll explain my answer. And mine would just be just the, um, because with me being a physical person, a sensual person, really um, with a, I guess, high sex drive, if you want to put it like that, um, my fear would be uh, being, becoming bored with that aspect. You know, and somebody that may not have the experience or, or whatever that that it may be um, a significant 
learning curve. And I guess one argument would be, well, you know, if you with a person and you invest the time and you're making the connection and you can uh, teach that person, teach that person how to meet you where you are. Mm-hmm. But that's a risky, that's a risky thing. And so, you know, I, you know, I just was trying to tend on the side of somebody coming to the, coming to the table with a little bit of experience. Now I will say now I, I like them nasty, but she, she, I don't need her to just be the done everybody that didn't come across the map. So <laughs> I guess that's the double edged sword. Uh, but that'd be my thing is just being afraid that that game going to be whack. So, I mean, I, I mean, I, I agree. And like <coughs> I say, this is not a easy, that wasn't a simple yes as to yeah. saying that everything will be hunky dory. Right. You know, because that within itself will be a challenge, especially I me. Mean, I, I kind of side with you. I'm a sexual being. And I think that in a lot of ways, sex is a need for a man. Would you All agree right. with that statement? Is sex a need for a man? I, I agree. I would agree with that. Being that we are totally, you know, for the large part, our physical beings, we have that desire um put here to procreate and all those things so yeah i would say that that's a that's a need definitely so and so to practice abstinence and sustainment is in a lot of ways could that be considered torture yeah i mean (laughs) if you were framing yeah yeah if you if it is high on your priority list and you're not getting it one could subjectively say that they're, they're being tortured. They're being tortured by that because they're being put in under undue stress because they can't have what it is that they want, how they want it. Mm-hmm. So that could be, that could be a form of, of torture to that particular person, mm-hmm. especially if they got to, got to, got to have it. Yeah, that totally so just to will classify as, as torture. So just to provide some background and some context behind today's topic, right? So, Ooh. Uh, Ooh. so essentially, you know, I've I I know a few few females that are virgins. I actually have a a friend of mine that kind of practiced celibacy and then eventually got got married. And so, and then and then also I know a, a few females that are practicing celibacy now. And so, just from the conversations I've had with those individuals, um, and really trying to trying to understand their side or whether what their perspective is on this whole idea about sex you know i posed the question to a to a close friend of both of us actually um because he was recently dating um a lady that was essentially a virgin as well and he basically in a nutshell (laughs) said i don't recommend it (laughs) (laughs) don't recommend don't recommend dating someone that's yeah. uh, practicing celibacy. Yes, because he he they 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 broke up a little while ago. Him him and this young lady, to use that as an example. And I mean, they dated, and you know, they 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 really dated. And I think they did some things uh, that one would question if that celibacy or not. And that's the reason why I think we should actually do a part two on this topic where we invite a female voice to add some perspective on it, because I would actually want to know as to how far is, it's too far when it comes to relationships that are, you know, practicing mm-hmm. abstinence. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause uh, in the purest sense, like celibacy is, is none of that physical intimacy stuff. It ain't no kissing, it ain't no touching, it ain't none of that. It ain't nothing that you could do that could lead to the next step. Right. So in this pure sense, that's what that's what it is. But you know, you know, nothing's pure. And so people kind of define and come up with their own definitions of of what <coughs> practicing celibacy is. So, you know, in a lot of instances, I would like to hear that female perspective because it's that, and, I'm, and I like for us to try to keep this as clean as possible, but it's that you know, simply penetration or is, or is that, you know, practicing oral? Is that eliminated? Like what is the, the line between actually practicing celibacy? Mm-hmm. 
I think I think it'll be good for us to have a part two. I guess anyway. It would. Know. It would. I mean, we we would get another perspective, but then you still, like you said, though everybody, mo, you know, you would have different people giving their own definition to it. But it would be good to to get a, a feminine um, feminine perspective on, I guess, general consensus on what most females feel like celibacy entails. But that's some hard stuff, boy. Hard Man. Stuff, cause that's a mad pause. Thing. Pause. But <laughs> pause. But yeah, that's a tough situation to be in. You spending that time. You spending that you time. Date, exactly. You're going out on dates. You you going out to dinner. You getting on that drink a little bit. Exactly. You go back. You're sitting on the couch. What you supposed to do? Exactly. <laughs> Get the hell out of there. Or you're gonna be tortured. What <laughs> What you supposed to do? You just went out. Y'all just had a nice dinner. Uh, had a few drinks. She looking good. She looking good, smelling good, saying all the right things. And then, I don't know, it's the female expectation. I mean, and then, and then you go, and then you, I don't know, you may go, you may, you may come over and watch a movie or something. Or, like, what is the expectation at that point? Well... That's why, oh well, hold up. That's why when you when you're dealing with somebody that, be, be it okay. So being that I'm experienced, is that's true. Being that I'm experienced and dealing with somebody else's experience, nine times out of ten we're gonna probably be on the same page. But also, but you just said something that's interesting, <laughs> and I actually wanted to get into this eventually, but. Being that you're experienced, though, so it's almost like if you've never had chocolate or if you've never had, you know, ice cream, then in a lot of ways you don't know what you're missing, right? True. So from your perspective or from our perspective, if we've gone out and we may have done something, um, and then you've experienced, you know, sex before, but for this person that may be a virgin or – I mean, for the person that's practicing celibacy, you know, if they've withheld for three years, are they truly missing out on anything in their in their eyes? You know, I don't think so. I don't think so. I would think I would tend to think not. They haven't experienced so their I guess their desire for it may not be as high. I can't really speak to this because I don't know. I probably ain't dealt with uh, had any dealings with anybody that would classify as celibate or virgin since <laughs> since middle school, high school. So I don't really have a strong reference point as to getting into the mind of someone that's practicing it. But just based off of that theory that you just raised, it would seem like, you know, just by <clears throat> maybe just in their nature, there might be some some physical urges and temptations and things like that. But I would feel like it would not be to the degree of someone that has really experienced it, has experienced it often or whatnot, and um, has a good gauge for, for what that, what the sexual experience is all about, especially good sex. I agree, but can, this was another, this was another conversation I had with a real close friend that we both know. Can physical touch and desires be controlled. The reason I ask that is because <laughs> it, it, all, it goes back to the ice cream. If you've never had ice cream before or if you've never had chocolate, then you may not know what, what you're missing. But at the same time, we're all human beings. And we're all, we all are attracted or have this desire to be touched and, and to be, you know, caressed or what have you. So even it, is it even possible to have those controlled? <clears throat> I have failed at that miserably. Well, I'm but you know, that to the listeners in a, in a lot of ways, because even though I know you and I are discussing this, and we're gonna have to have a part two, just to fill in the gaps, because you and I, we, this not this not something I've dealt with, though. This is something <laughs> I've never experienced before. We, <laughs> Man, you making me feel like a scumbag. Well, maybe you should. <laughs> I need to go revisit. I gotta go sit in the corner and think back on my life 
in all of the wrongs that I have done. You might need to regroup, and you might but need to go get baptized and everything. I'll say rebaptized. But, you know, I think to speak to that, though, um, not any knock to that, because really that's the way you should strive to do, though, in terms of, you know, maintain it to yourself until you meet you meet that that person that you want to give your all your whole self to mm -hmm. and so that's the work that we have just in our in our faith and our belief is just working against a lot of the nature working against a lot of what society says you should do to make that that prize or that gift like you term it more precious when it's all said and done mm -hmm. um, so that's the that's the work and, and really we should be striving to maintain that until we get into the relationship to where the, the ground has been set, that, that all those things are okay. Each time you know you have an experience with somebody, there is something different that you get. Oh, definitely. you know, you, you definitely. get you get a you get a different experience each time. You've been with five different people and each one of those five people do something that you like, then you going when you when you go on your search, you're gonna be looking for somebody that does all those five things the way that those five different people did. Mm -hmm. And that might be an impossible task. And so you'll you can run the risk of never being satisfied. Like right. you get in a good relationship, you got a good woman, she does all those things that support you and lift you up. She's your backbone, but you put so much into that sexual component. And she may not be able to do all that those five different people did over that period of time. And so you like, that's missing. You complain to your boy, like, man, damn, dog, she good, but she don't do this and she don't do this. And they be looking at you like, man, you're crazy. But because you put so much value on that, could mess you up down the road. And then I think you were going to bring up something else about giving up a piece of yourself. Right, right, right. I mean, if you really think about it, every person – for the most part, that you might have had sex with, you have an, an attachment to that person. And you can kind of do a, a Rolodex in your memory of this person, that person, be like, golly, what? And so you do kind of have, there is a kind of this attachment and these ties that you leave with one another the moment you have sex. But actually, the question I wanted to ask you also was this whole idea of how sex introduces confusion, confusion, and cloudiness you know mm -hmm. so, you know this whole idea that things may be going one way but then the moment you become i don't know how it happens or what it is about it but um, in, in addition to that that attachment and that soul connection that just took place that soul tie now there's confusion and cloudiness with that comes along with it it's a spiritual act above all else it's physical on the surface but it's a it's a spiritual act and i tend to think that the that women i am and I'm, i may be speaking out of line by saying it but you know the women really make the, the more spiritual connection whereas we can almost stop with just the the physical aspect of it you know and so it does cloud things up because you might have one person that's looking at it as we've shared something spiritual it's meaningful by you participating by us having sex it says that we are good together we've got something going on and you might have another person that just saying shit i'm just trying to get off and move on right. get in and get out right. and so there's the confusion a one line of confusion there in itself we scumbag, dog. We scumbag. Oh, no, that's the reason why. But 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 at the same time, that's the reason why I put the kind of kind of put the question out there, is because you would you even be willing to give it? A, you wouldn't even be willing to give it a try. I ain't gonna say that. I mean, I, I opened up with that, but at this point, at this point in time, a lot of it is just the person, and it's just the feeling that you get. From the person and i think when you do establish that and have your eyes open to the, the the real the complete goodness that a person is bringing that unless you're an idiot or ignorant like you said that you just 
ignore all of the good stuff for that one particular aspect of it. But outside of that, man, I, I feel like presented with presented in the right space, right time, that I'll be able to, if, if I'm, you know, encountering someone that's really strong about it, they're practicing celibacy or they're a virgin, that I feel like I'm smart enough to be able to support them and what they're doing and, and not do anything to, to, to mess them up or, or disrespect what they have going on. Okay. So, so this brings me to a, to another point. How, okay. So I don't know if this is true or not, but you know, I have this, I have the feeling that a lot of people that practice celibacy or, or, or date someone that's a virgin or what have you rush into marriage because they are essentially they're trying to do the right thing and they're trying not what well, I mean if you consider that the right thing but but they're trying not to have sex uh, before marriage and they're trying to do the right thing but at the same time three four months later they're engaged and then they're getting married two months later what have you you know what are your thoughts I mean what are your thoughts about that? That's my challenge. Along okay. the lines of, I'm with this person, and we have a good time, but I know that this person isn't going to have sex because of either they're practicing celibacy or they're a virgin, and the only way you're going to have sex with that person is if you are married to them. You know, now you're the guy, and you're like, man, I really like this girl. I really want to be with her. But I kind of question, do you really like this girl? Are you really in love with this girl? Or are you really just one to, you see her in them jeans and you be like, golly. <laughs> you lusting. That sound like lust. Yeah, that sound, sound like lust. You lusting. Are you lusting? No, nah, I wouldn't. So I, wouldn't re- I wouldn't recommend making no, no lifelong decision off of... Uh, off of that lust, but I think people do. I oh think- man, I mean, I wouldn't deny that because you, you know, you could, you could get that mixed up, that feeling mixed up with just it being chemistry or, or that chemical attraction, that physical attraction, that strong love that could be misconstrued. Um, now, each person is different. Each person's level of discernment, what they're looking for, is different. So it's hard. For me to speak to that for each individual, but I do know that um, there have I've personally been in this situation to where <laughs> it's like okay, we've been going down this road for about ninety days. <laughs> People hate when I do that when I put it in the time, but it's you've been this period of time. You haven't done anything. You 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 you're doing it the right way, but like you say, you know them jeans. Exactly. These dinners, we watching these movies. Exactly. Each, you know, as time goes on, you get more and more comfortable, and so you get to that point, and it's like, well, you know, I ain't really trying to do nothing unless I'm in a committed relationship. And the boy has to step back and think about it and say, okay, <laughs> well, I'm such a scumbag <laughs> in my past life, but. You still bad to step back and say, well, okay, I ain't got nothing else going on right now. All right, we can do that. And then <laughs> and then you in a committed relationship, <laughs> you consummate the committed relationship, and then you realize that all that stuff that you felt, all that stuff that you felt was just for that for that moment, for that instant. It wasn't real, it wasn't real love, it wasn't a connection, it was just Lust speaking loud. Um, so it happened. It has happened to me before. So I'm think, sure. I, is that, and I think that we, you and I both know people that probably that we probably may believe that they have may have committed for that exact same reason as well. So so <laughs> my challenge would be okay. What I'm trying to do, and when I said yes to the when I initially said it. I'm actively trying not to make sex the priority or to put that above all. You know what I mean? So that's mm-hmm. the reason why I said yes, right? 
and mm-hmm. it's really trying to take an active and say, okay, let me really get to know this person and prevent the cloudiness or the the judgment from entering in. But to but to but on the on the flip side of that, uh, or on the contrary to that, like you just said, then you got this whole double edged sword that say, okay, I think I like this girl, I think I want to be with her, but is that really just lust? So you see the challenge. It's a challenge. It's a it's definitely a challenge. Then I got the last question I wanted to ask you too, was really along the lines of a conversation I had with a friend, in which his argument and and this is kind of going to take it down that that religious aspect of it right because i mean i know we got a lot of religious people that are just going to kill us on this particular topic which is fine you know to, yep. each, to each his own um and he <clears throat> was without saying cast the first stone holla back <laughs> <laughs> put, put those rocks the, down the, the sinner's prayer <laughs> the, sinner's, the sinner's prayer put those rocks down so I guess the debate that I had with, with with a close friend was really along the lines of if you know that you're committed to this person, so say you know you're committed and you know that this is the person you're going to be with, but this person is practicing celibacy or they're a virgin and they're not going to have sex. His, his, his perspective on it was saying, hey, I'm committed to you. I'm not going anywhere. Uh, we've been dating and we've been together for a year or what have you. You know, what does getting married, like I'm married to you now. You know, that was his, that was his, his, um, his words. Basically, we're married. And so what are your thoughts about that perspective? Because my, my perspective was saying, I almost said his name. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, oh, don't do that. that. Oh, we had to, hit, we had to hit that edit button hard on that one. Nah, we won't do nobody like that. Who almost put their name out that bad? My bad. Man, I'm glad you caught yourself. Who I caught myself. So, what if my my response to that was like, but you're not married to that person, not in the in the in the biblical term of you know going through the getting married and the formal marriage, but he's saying. He's saying, hey, we're committed. Like, I'm committed, so marriage is essentially a commitment. So in my eyes, we committed. So that's the same thing as walking down the aisle and getting married by a pastor or or a judge. What are your thoughts on that? But the marriage is so much more than just that whole commitment or thinking we in a committed relationship. Because once once you get married, you are co- you are committed, but you're committing to a lot of different stuff. You committed to being there. You committed to when I don't want to be around you, I, I'm gonna be in this house with you through the good and the bad. I'm on. We're gonna be together on this. The financial uh, support of our family. We're gonna do X, Y, Z thing. So it's more than just saying I'm with you all the time and and, and, and we do this and we do that. Like there's so much more to to being married that you can't play it you can't you can't pretend to be married for real you can't pretend that so it's only it's only one way to be married and that's to really be married and be there for that person and 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 in all those facets good and bad sickness and, and and in health when a family member goes down are you willing to take that family member into your house are you willing to do uh things that 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 support your spouse that you may not be totally you know connected to or involved in but are you willing to be there and be supportive of those things so it, it's more than lip service so i really can't i really can't co-sign that statement well that was you my, know i, in, in I can't really ways, co-sign that and, and in a lot of ways that was my rebuttal but at the same time <clears throat> you know what if marriage is really a mental state though. So even though you may not go through the the exercise of it, I mean, you could be married and your mental state can change from saying I'm committed to this individual and just saying, okay, we're married, but that's it. So, I mean, counter, I mean if, playing devil's advocate, 
yeah. you know, I can see that perspective, kind of. I'm not going to say I agree with it, but I can still see that perspective. Well, the, well then it, the ultimate question would be is that if you feel like that and your mind is there, why not make the proclamation? Why not you know, seal it if, if you believe, if you believe like in Christ, like I believe in Christ, why not seal it? It, 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 seal it in the church with a pastor ordained to do that. Why not just yeah. make the proclamation and be done and be married on the books, be legally connected, be all those things. Why not just go ahead and do that? Well, that's, that's good. That could be. And and make it and complete it a hundred percent. Well, everybody different. So that could be various reasons. That could be. Various. Well, that's, that would be the, that would be the question that is like, question. if we, if we saying we married, why not just go ahead and, and make it three sixty? So that would be a, that would be a follow, good follow up question to that. But personally, um, mm-mm, nah. So nah. So to recap, could you date someone that is a <laughs> or practicing celibacy? We're gonna make that. Uh, uh, we're gonna leave that open for the audience, for the listeners. Oh, so you don't? I, I can't. I can't summarize my thoughts on the topic. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so I'm changed now. You didn't change my mind. I I didn't do this podcast. I didn't have a revelation. No, you have not. I didn't change. Hey, I want to change up. my answer. <laughs> you trying to clean it? Up. I didn't see the answer to the. I didn't see the answer to the test. I wanna. I wanna. Uh, I wanna go back and edit mine. Oh, there you go. So, so my answer to that question is. I would seriously go into that type of relationship, practicing abstinence with the right intent, trying to do things the right way. The problem that would occur would be in those situations that you and I described throughout the podcast where, you know, you go out, you have a good time, you're going to have that alone time, and then you and that individual that you're dating are alone and trying to sustain, abstain and trying not to, you know, and trying to value and respect because it, it's kind of, I mean, if you really think about it, it's kind of, I don't know if, if sexy is the right word, but it's, if you could look at a woman and you could say, okay, man, like she's practicing celibacy for four or five years or she's never had sex with somebody, you know, we really should value that. But yeah, I think in a lot of ways we don't value those type of women when we say that's risky because it's like, okay, those are the type of women that you really should value. They're really trying to, do something that in this day and age is is rare. It's like zero point zero one percent. That's just yeah. a number. and that's just a number I made up. But that's how rare it is. And so, you know, do we really value the woman as a virgin or practice of practicing celibacy? That's a different topic, and maybe you know that's something that we should discuss one day. There's there's sexiness in that mystery. There's that sexiness in the unknown. So hence why it is special to be able to live a, a life of celibacy or to still be a virgin. That's what makes it so precious. And that's why there was so much in terms of the, the biblical background, which is what I know the biblical background of it was just that, that particular portion is that to, to enhance the value of the, from, from a man to a woman, enhance the value of the woman and what she means and her, her preciousness. Uh, but, I'm a victim of society. Society, of course, works counter to those things that need that are in, in place to be make us great. Right. And so society says that, oh, that's that's terrible. Like, who who really does that in this day and age? Society says that you need to, you know, you need to show it. If you got it, flaunt it. Be engaged in be engaged in sex because it feels so good and it means so much. But um, the it, there really is something to be said about somebody that um, that is able to to do that and and to maintain and sustain that type of lifestyle. Oh, it is, it is, it is. 
So for that very reason, it's the reason why, you know, we really jump back to when I originally asked, when I originally answered the question with one simple word, for that very reason, it's the reason why I would give it a shot. Now we all say it and fall short. So I would go and do that for as long as I could and hope that, you know, that everything worked out for the good. And that's all I got. It's a battle. And this is what this is what we bring on the free lunch podcast is this this honesty. This is things that, that really are on our mind and I I'd imagine that there are a lot of people out there that are thinking thinking these same thing and asking themselves these same type of questions. Uh, personally, I have uh, revealed <laughs> a lot about my my previous life, quotation marks. Um, but it's real, man. It, it's it's a it's a real thing. Um, it's a, a it's a real dilemma for some of us. But it's 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 a noteworthy dilemma. And, and you know, to what you're saying, man, it, it really is about framing your mind and and coming up with those things that really mean something that are really of high value and those things that we really should be appreciating and not degrading or looking down upon. So, you know, all that being said through the, um, through the duration of this podcast, I have actually been reformed. It only took 45 minutes or so to do it. Um, I'm changed, man. I'm changed. And I'm gonna approach this thing a whole lot different. So at least try. I re- I th- I th- at least try. Yeah, at least try. But but what I'm saying is, is this right here too. You you said something, and I kind of want to put this out there simply because you and I both are. We live our truth so that nobody else can use it against us, right? Date my theory or whatever. And you know our conversations are 100 percent authentic and genuine. So even at the same time, we put this out there. Um, our our viewpoints and our perspectives, you know, listeners and and others shouldn't hold that over your head, because a lot of this, like you said, is for us to generate thought and conversation and really provoke thought. And so, at the same time, it's not for some for something to dangle over your head and say, okay, you said this and you said that, but it's really to really think about what are we valuing. And in this case, it's um, are we even valuing the woman that is trying to practice celibacy or that is a virgin? Because if we were, then that idea of risk um, that we talked about shouldn't even be a thought. Because the value in her pureness is what we should be attracted to and the... Um, the risk should be the ability to teach her what makes us happy. If we do marry that person and, and begin to have sex with them. Exactly. So, uh, that's all I got. We live to grow. Every day is an opportunity to get better, to be more informed and be mo- more knowledgeable about the things going on around us. So this is what we use this platform for, man. So it's been a great talk. So be on the think lookout. about it. Yeah. Be on the lookout for, um, this topic with a female voice and a female opinion, but you know, <clears throat> we are looking for ways to, to have guests. Um, that's one thing that we've been exploring and I think we are close to having that platform to have some of the listeners participate. So, um, if that's something you would be interested in potentially participating in the topic, or if you have a topic, email it to free lunch podcast at gmail.com. And we'll survey your topic or your level of interest and see how we can potentially have you on a future on a future show. Uh, specifically, if you're interested in having a part two and you've kind of practiced celibacy and you can provide a female perspective on um, or, or if you are a virgin um, and that's something you want to share, um, feel free to also shoot shoot an email to the inbox or. For those of you that have BG and I's personal information, just shoot us a text. And we, we're trying to figure out how to get listeners to participate. But we definitely want to start ha- <clears throat> start having guests in the in the near future. Yeah. So we, we're looking forward to that.
So we're going to get out of here, dog. But before we go, we're just going to drop these uh, places where you can reach us. We got the uh, Free Lunch Podcast on IG. Keep our uh, pictures and stuff updated on that thing. Um, check us out. Blogs and podcasts are always posted uh, on the blog site, freelunchpodcast.blogspot.com. If you want to just have some commentary on the, this podcast or any other podcast that we've done or any other blog, you can also shoot us some 40 characters on Twitter, Free Lunch Pod C. Uh, we look forward to hearing from you, and we appreciate you rolling with the train. It's a remix to Ignition, hot and fresh out the kitchen. Mama rolling, everybody got every man in here wishing, sipping on Coke and rum. I'm like, so what? I'm drunk. It's a freaking weekend, baby. I'm about to have me some fun. Bounce, 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 bounce,